Good Saturday morning. Welcome to Devotions with Pastor Paul. It is day 14. Got a boo-boo. Day 14 of our 21 days of fasting and prayer. Next Saturday will be our final day. Guys, it is also men's breakfast. Now, we come up with a variety of excuses not to um, come to men's breakfast. I don't know why. It is one of the most uplifting, encouraging, supportive days that we can have. And listen, guys, men, um, isn't that something you can use? Support, camaraderie, friendship, a place to just laugh, enjoy one another, and get some, you know, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna keep it, try and have a variety of stuff. So whatever you're fasting, um, you'd be able to join us if you're fasting everything. Well, then, you know, we'll have some water for you. But um, it's going to be a great morning. It's 9 o'clock. It's at the church. And, uh, boy, I, I sure hope there's not four people who show up. I hope there's 30 guys who show up. We're going to have a great time, and you're invited. That's next Saturday, 9 a.m. at the church. It's it's fairly, you know, it's in and out. We uh, we don't waste a lot of time. We get you there. We get going, and uh, we get you out of there. So do me a favor. Um, come join us. Come join us next Saturday for men's breakfast. Um also, don't forget, tomorrow night, Sunday, um, is our worship night. And our worship team is stoked. They're excited. And now, listen, we're able to offer child care now. So um, bring the kiddos. They're going to have a movie night. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, my daughter-in-law, uh, Becky, has stepped up for that. So um, appreciate her doing that. So there's going to be child care, worship night. Six o'clock at the church tomorrow, and um, sure hope you'll join us. That's the 16th of January, um, 2022. Maybe you're watching this uh, 20 years later. I can't imagine why this would still be around 20 years later. But anyways, but anyways, so that's worship night tomorrow night. That is uh, men's breakfast next Saturday. And don't forget, Foundations class starts Thursday. This upcoming Thursday, the 20th, it is... Literally, I promise you, it is transformative. Um, we start with the church, we go into spiritual disciplines, and we finish with your spiritual shape and how God has fixed, created, set you, made you um, ready for service. And it is, it's it's going to be a good time. So that you need to get signed up. You can do it at the church tomorrow, or you can do it online via our, um, via uh, an email if it's been sent to you. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh, how he loves. Oh, how he loves. I love that song from David Crowder. Um, it talks about the, 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 the depths of the, Paul says, the riches of the love of God, be the way he described. God's love is so much more than we understand and so much more than we than we fully accept embrace i grew up under a theology that said every time you mess up that's it you're you're backslidden do i believe <clears throat> that a believer can backslide. Yeah. Do I believe that you can backslide out of the love of God? Absolutely not. I can't come up with a scenario where I would stop loving my children. Can you, if you're a parent, can you as a child come up with a scenario where you stop loving your parents? I mean, you may be angry with them, upset with them. I don't know. It's a little different for you, but as a parent, <clears throat> Tell me the scenario that you would stop loving your kids. I joke about it, but it's true. If I suddenly found out that my son or my daughter were horrible serial killers, I would be disgusted. I would be angry. I'd be embarrassed. But I could not stop loving my children. 
Jesus says, if you are sinful people, you are born into sin. You, you, are, you have a proclivity towards ungodliness. If you know how to love on that kind of love, that level, then how much more will your heavenly Father in heaven love you? He's perfect in every way. And he loves us. Malachi chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 6 says this. It says, I'm the Lord, I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob's are not already completely destroyed. <laughs> Whoa! <clears throat> I am God. I do not change. And that's why you are not destroyed. In other words, I told you I love you. I told you we're in covenant relationship with each other. Am I disappointed? Do I have to discipline you? Yes and Yes. Are there things that I look at that you do that I just can't? Have you ever as a parent just gone, I don't, don't tell that story, especially if your kids are grown. Just, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah. But I think there's things, well, there are things. The guy goes, I can't even look. But I love you. Romans 8 38 and 39 says, I am sure neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you hear what it said? It said neither things present nor things to come. Now listen, I'm not advocating that we sin by any means. We do not take advantage of grace. But God loved us in this while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. God loved you before you accepted him. Do you think he loves you less after? Do you think there's any way that God could just all of a sudden go, no, 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 don't love you. My point is this, that we have this tendency, <clears throat> I think, to feel because of shame, we're ashamed of our actions or we're ashamed of some of the things that we do. And rightfully so, I am, I'm sure you are too. We have this idea that all of a sudden, well, you know what, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize. It's very, very early. It's cold too. We have this idea that if I do this or I do that, that God just, and that's, that's our guilt. It's also a lie from Satan. Well, you know what? You just messed up so much that God could never take you back. But God never, God never got rid of you. God never pushed you away. God never abandoned you. God never left you to yourself. He still loves you. Now, again, let me say, is he disappointed? For sure. Does he discipline us when we need it? Absolutely. But the thought that God could ever stop loving me, that's repugnant to God. Finish up with just one more scripture for you. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So you know it's about love. It's the last verse. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, there are three things that will endure, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Can I tell you something? If you've made a train wreck of your life, God still loves you. He never stopped loving you. If you're doing everything right, God loves you. Maybe, maybe you're doing everything so right that you're you're just a religious do-gooder. It's all based on works. God still loves you. Maybe you're somewhere in between. You have your ups and your downs. You make me your mistakes. And you brush yourself off. And you return to the love of the Father. Oh, how he loves. Lord, thank you for your great love.
for us. Thank you that neither height nor depth nor things present, things to come, life, death. And I'm missing some. Could ever separate us from your love. You love. And you never change. So we can be secure in that love. I pray that if there's anyone who's just struggling with the knowledge, with the fact, with the settled fact that you love them today, I pray that they would relax. They're your child. And you love them more than they even love their own children. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Bless your people this day, I pray. Amen. Hey, I'm a little over today. I apologize. God bless you. I won't see you tomorrow unless you're in church or online in church, which would be awesome. And I would love to see you there. Um, and at worship night tomorrow night. God bless you. Have a great, great day. See you Monday.